Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is leukocyte extra, uh, sorry, extra vasation. Okay, which means uh, the removal of leukocytes from the blood and the bringing of them into the interstitial fluid. Okay, so taking leukocytes from the blood and putting them into the interstitial fluid, which is an essential part of the acute inflammatory response. Okay, so what we're going to start with is we're going to start by setting the scene for leukocyte extravasation by looking at the initiation of the acute inflammatory response, what it involves, and then we'll see three examples of leukocyte extravasation. We'll see two examples of how we can extravasate neutrophils, and then we'll see one example of how we can extravasate uh, monocytes from the blood to uh, make macrophages. Okay, so let's start off with the uh, acute inflammatory response to set the scene for this. Okay, so um, here is our pathogen, let's say. So we've got some pathogen within our healthy tissue, and uh, this is going to begin the inflammatory response. So a pathogen is just anything which is capable of causing disease, basically. So pathology means disease, really, and then ogen means beginning, genesis, creating disease. Okay, so anything that's capable of causing disease. So it could be a bacterial cell, it could be a fungal cell, it could be a virus, it could be some uh, protist, um, for instance, it could be malaria or something along those lines. Okay, it's something, however, that shouldn't be there. Okay, and what it's going to trigger is it's going to trigger the acute inflammatory response. Now, how is the acute inflammatory response initiated? Well, it's initiated by uh, cells known as sentinel cells. Okay, so all over your body, in every single tissue, you have dotted around the place cells which are collectively known as sentinel cells and these are guard cells basically they uh, are standing and waiting and watching they're continuously on the lookout for the emergence of a pathogen within uh, the tissue basically so they're continuously looking for uh, things in the interstitial fluid which should not be there okay so what types of sentinel cells do we have in the human body so one of the major types is a dendritic cell, okay? And although these look as though they're somehow related to neurons, and their name suggests they are related to neurons, they are not in the slightest bit related to neurons. So dendrites are just the name for these processes coming off the center of the cell body, okay? So they have absolutely nothing to do with uh, neurons. They're not excitable. They certainly can't conduct action potentials because they don't have the voltage-gated uh, channels that you need in order to um, conduct action potentials. Okay, so dendritic cells are one of these cells that you have all over the body in all of your tissues, and they are just um, standing and waiting, and they're an alarm cell, basically. If they find a pathogen, they're going to send alarm signals that will then uh, trigger the acute inflammatory response. Okay, so let's now have a look at another sentinel cell. So another sentinel cell that you have dotted all over your body and all of your tissues is what's known as a resident macrophage, so a big blob of a cell here. Okay, so uh, macrophages are something that you will recruit into uh, the interstitial space uh, where you have an infection upon the uh, beginning of the acute inflammatory response. However, you do have some macrophages dotted around all over the place prior to any sort of inflection, and these are known as resident macrophages. Okay, and they uh, are a sentinel cell. They will uh, watch and look out for uh, pathogens, and if they find the pathogens, they'll send alarm signals. Then finally, the final type of sentinel cell is a mast cell. Okay, so this is a mast cell. Now, mast cells are another type of sentinel cell, and they are filled uh, with um, granules, basically. So they have loads of little vesicles inside of them, uh, which contain um, the molecule histamine. Okay, so let me put... Uh, 
as green dots, turquoise dots here, this represents the histamine within these vesicles, and these are known as the histamine granules within the mast cell. Okay, so all three of these cell types, dendritic cells, resident macrophages, and mast cells, they are uh, dotted around tissues, and they are looking for signs of a pathogen uh, invading our tissue, and if they find it, they're going to release signals. Okay, so how do they detect the pathogen? Well, basically, um, when you think about this, how would you go about detecting a pathogenic cell? Because all of our, you know, the in human body consists of 100 million cells. How do you decide whether a cell is a normal human cell or whether it's a pathogenic cell? Well, the idea is that you must surely, um, the pathogen must surely produce something that human cells would never, ever, ever produce. If they produce a molecule that normal human cells would never, ever have on them, um, then uh, we could use that as a sign that this is not a normal human cell, basically. Okay, and there's a general term, there's an umbrella term which covers all of these molecules which pathogens have, which human cells would never have, and this is to call them pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Okay, so pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And because pathogen-associated molecular patterns is a bit of a mouthful, it's often abbreviated to PAMPs for short, P for pathogen, A for associated, M for molecular, P for patterns, and then S for the S on the end of patterns. So a PAMP is any molecule that the pathogen will produce and maybe either secrete or maybe put on its surface that normal cells of the human body would never ever produce and therefore is a giveaway sign that this cell is not a normal human cell. Okay, and you might think, well, this is all well and good, you know, if this is a uh, bacterial cell or if it's a uh, fungal cell or if it's some protist cell, but what about if it's a virus? Viruses aren't cells, uh, but they are still little particles, okay? So even viruses are tiny little particles, and they might have molecules on their surface that uh, normal human cells would never ever have. In addition, when they go inside human cells, they might, um, once they're inside the human cell, cause that human cell to produce molecules that the human cell would never usually produce. And that again will feature as uh, a sign that there's something wrong here. Okay, so, uh, these sentinel cells, these resident macrophages, these dendritic cells, and these mast cells will have receptors for these pathogen-associated molecular uh, patterns, and these are collectively known as pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs for short. So, for every single PAMP, basically, for every different pathogen-associated molecular pattern, there is a corresponding pattern recognition receptor, or a PRR, on the surface of the um, on the surface of the um, sentinel cell. Okay, so let's draw this. So here is our pattern recognition receptor on the surface of this dendritic cell. So we'll put this in green. And then uh, this pathogen might well be uh, releasing or might well have on its surface a pathogen-associated molecular pattern. And I'll just colour in the virus in red as well to denote that it's a pathogen. Okay, so this pathogen might have on its surface a molecule uh, that is the ligand for this specific pattern recognition receptor, and it's a molecule that would never usually be expressed on human cells and is therefore a pathogen-associated molecular pattern there in blue. Okay, and when uh, the pathogen-associated molecular pattern binds to its corresponding pattern recognition receptor, this is going to activate that pattern recognition receptor, and it will activate the sentinel cells. Okay, uh, and all three of these cell types, dendritic cells, resident macrophages, and mast cells, will all have these pattern recognition receptors, which will activate them when they bind their ligand. Now, what do they do then? What alarm signals do they send out? Well, dendritic cells and resident macrophages start sending out interleukin-1, which is often abbreviated to IL-1 for short, 
and also tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, so both of these cell types, dendritic cells and resident macrophages, when their uh, pattern recognition receptors bind their ligand, will start releasing interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. And these molecules are so important that I think I should uh, write their full names out. So IL-1 is short for interleukin-1, okay, and tumor necrosis factor alpha is abbreviated to TNF-alpha. So this is tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, so um, commonly you will hear people refer to TNF alpha just as TNF. Uh, and they won't put the uh, clarifying alpha there. Now, there are different types of tumor necrosis factors other than tumor necrosis factor alpha. There's also tumor necrosis factor beta, and there's also a tumor necrosis factor C. Okay, however, they're far more niche, basically, than tumor necrosis factor alpha. So, if anyone ever just says tumor necrosis factor without clarifying what type they mean, you can assume they mean tumor necrosis factor alpha, the main tumor necrosis factor. Uh, you wouldn't assume they meant tumor necrosis factor beta or tumor necrosis factor C. Okay, so you'd assume they were talking about tumor necrosis factor alpha, but it's better to clarify that you mean tumor necrosis factor alpha by putting the alpha on the end. Okay, and the mast cells start producing a different, uh, well, they don't start producing, they start releasing uh, a different molecule, and this is obviously the histamine that they've got stored within their granules here. So they're going to start releasing histamine. So, these are the alarm signals, basically. The mast cells are releasing histamine, and the uh, resident macrophages and the dendritic cells are releasing interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, now we'll discuss what these molecules are going to do um, in the next video, but just to give you the broad picture, what do we want to happen? Well, uh, we have this pathogen in our tissue that shouldn't be there. So we need to try and eradicate that. So we need to bring in cells that are specifically uh, targeted, well, not just cells, we need to bring in weapons and uh, cells that are specifically uh, designed to destroy invading pathogenic cells, okay? Now, all of these troops uh, both proteins and cells, they're all within the bloodstream. They're doing nothing at the moment. They're inactive in the bloodstream. However, uh, we need to get them out of the bloodstream into this site of inflammation, okay, or infection rather. Uh, so uh, we need to trigger changes in the blood vessel linings uh, of the blood vessels supplying this area because uh, only by triggering changing changes in the blood vessel linings are we going to change what can leave the blood vessel and go into the interstitial fluid and that's what we need to do in order uh, to bring these troops in from the blood. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.